Hey guys, welcome back to The Voice of Diabetes. This is Diana Bitucci. If you are new to The Voice of Diabetes, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share, and don't forget to turn on the notification so that you won't miss any videos that I upload here all pertaining to diabetes. So earlier this week, I uploaded a video on metformin. I talked about how metformin works, what does it do in our bodies, the benefits of taking metformin, However, today I do want to talk about the proper way of taking metformin. Why does metformin cause B12 deficiency? What are things that I tell patients to watch out for? And how do I start patients on metformin? So make sure you, you watch the whole video because we will talk about all of those topics today. As you may know, the most common, and I'm not going to talk about all of the side effects of metformin because as you know, there's probably a lot of possible side effects of metformin, even though those are very unlikely, the most likely and the most common that my patients complain about and in all the uh, metformin clinical trials, all the studies I've done are gastrointestinal related, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, loose stools. Those are the most common and those are actually the most common reasons why people stop taking metformin. As you know, I am um, I specialize in endocrine, so my area is specialty only, and I do a lot of diabetes. Um, so we, by the time that the patient is being referred to our office, they've already tried metformin through primary care, and they say, hey, it's not for me, it causes way too many low stools, I can't leave the house half of the time without worrying about something happening. And I'll find out that the patient was taking uh, regular metformin, so there's a difference. We have metformin and then metformin ER or metformin XR, whichever one your pharmacy has. And it, that's known for extended release. So the difference with regular metformin, usually we, we absorb it much quicker. So you're digesting it very quickly and therefore patients tend to get a lot of side effects. With the extended release or the XR or ER, you are four times less likely that you will experience those side effects, especially the gastrointestinal side effects, such as the diarrhea, the bloating, abdominal pain, and loose stools that we mentioned earlier. Another issue I have with the way metformin is started is often they will start patients with 1,000 milligrams twice a day. You are almost setting up the patient um, setting them up for failure, that they are not gonna to tolerate this medication, they never wanna start it again. The way I prescribe and the way a lot of endo people prescribe uh, metformin is we do 500 and I always do extended release. I rarely start regular metformin. The only time I start regular metformin is if the patient has a history of any gastric procedures in the past, like gastric bypass, then normally I, I don't do, I don't like to start the extended release because of the way the, um, the anatomy of the GI has been altered. So I only start regular metformin for those patients, but I'm not talking about exclusion. In general, I normally start with 500 milligrams once a day with dinner. I always tell patients, make sure you are having this with the largest meal of the day, either lunch or dinner. It tends to be dinner most of the time. So I'll start with 500 for about a week. If the patient is tolerated, I'll increase it to 500 twice a day. So I'll do it with breakfast and I'll do it with dinner. Normally the max dose we want of metformin is 2,500 milligrams daily. I do about 2,000, so I'll do 1,000 with breakfast and then 1,000 with dinner. But I rem remember, I'm doing in the extended release and I'm only starting with 500. So I'm, doing, I'm starting them with baby steps so that the body can adjust and you're not getting all of the side effects at once. Once the body starts to adjust, patients normally say, hey, I had no side effects, but I had side effects before. The side effects are just intolerable. So I wanna make sure that, you know, as a patient, if you are, if you are taking metformin and you're having some of these issues, you can always talk to your primary, you can always talk to your doctor, no matter who it is, primary or endocrine, and say, hey, can I try the extended release if it's, you know, if, it, if it's not contraindicated for you? And let me start with 500 milligrams for a week and then slowly taper up to the maximum dose that you need. Now, the maximum dose that you need might not be 2,000. Maybe your doctor only wants you to be on 1,000 milligrams per day. That's all individualized, but make sure whatever dose you're going to, you're starting slow. The key is starting slow and the key is extended release if you don't have any contraindications for the extended release. Usually the 500 milligrams are considered to be generic, but for some reason with the insurance companies, the 1000 milligrams of extended release metformin 
is considered to be more, it's not really covered by the insurance companies. It always requires a prior auth every time we do it. Normally, I don't even prescribe the 1000 milligrams ever, not even of the regular or the extended release. One, because the, the metformin pill alone is kind of big and some patients can have difficulty swallowing it. And two, I like to start slow. I can't really start slow if I'm prescribing the 1000 milligrams. So I always do the 500 milligrams, but if you are having issues getting the, the 1000 milligram ER approved, it's because it's not considered to be generic with a lot of the insurance companies. So you can always ask your provider or they may already know to just call in the 500 milligram tablets. And then you can take two in the morning and then two with your dinner if your dose is 2000 or you can do one with dinner and one with breakfast. Depending on what your dose is, that's gonna be between you and your, your um, you know, whoever is prescribing this medication. Remember here, I only like to give information about the medications, information about the diabetes and different things. I am not giving any advice, so these are all things that you would need to talk to your doctor about because they know you best, they know your medical history, they know your lab work, and so much more, so please always discuss with them. However, um, these are things that we are noticing, uh, these are side effects and things that we do see very common with metformin, so I want you to be aware and make sure, make sure you are always taking this with food. It can be a little tough on the GI tract, so we wanna make sure we're preventing that. I wanna talk about B12 deficiency. I always, always screen B12 levels on a patient who is taking metformin. Uh, metformin can cause B12 deficiency because it may prevent the absorption of B12 in the gastrointestinal system. It doesn't mean that you've taken metformin for one week and your B12 is low. It's more so with chronic use, maybe, maybe you've been using for six months, maybe for a year. So normally what I, what I do is I'll screen for B12 deficiency with patients on metformin. If it's normal, I'll repeat it again in a year. If it's not normal, then I normally will start the patient on B12, just oral B12 over the counter. Um, and obviously if they have some type of different anemia, pernicious anemia, then I will do injections. But that will obviously we discuss with the patient to see what type of B12 deficiency they have. Um, so that is common though. We are seeing a lot more B12 deficiency with metformin use. It does not discourage me from using metformin with patients. I just like to be mindful because remember B12 deficiency can cause neuropathy, numbness and tingling to your extremities. And diabetes can cause uh, neuropathy as well, especially uncontrolled diabetes. So I wanna make sure that the patient doesn't develop those symptoms. And if they do, is it a cause of it from the diabetes or is it a cause from the B12 deficiency? So that's very common uh, routine blood work for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So I am gonna talk about gestational diabetes next. Um, this is becoming a very big um, diagnosis in the United States. We're getting a lot more referrals with gestational diabetes at every different office that you know we hear about. We know that it's on the rise now. So I wanna make sure that we talk about what is gestational diabetes, where should your numbers be, what are your target, how does it affect the baby, all of that will be in the next video, so make sure you are tuning in. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and don't forget to turn on your notification so that you'll know when that video is uploaded. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys all next time. Take care.